Kia ora koutou whānau. Um, my name's Dr Hu and I wish to first of all apologise for not being able to be there tonight. Uh, I ended up with a meeting in Wellington that I can't avoid and uh, so it clashed. The Me Too movement. Thank you to the Women's Centre for allowing me to come and speak to this tonight but also welcome to Ali and the rest of the panellists who are going to give you a range of perspectives. I hope that this will also help you to uh, also get another idea around how to include other, the ones that sit outside the norm, the ones that sit outside the mainstream, the minorities, the marginalised, the vulnerable. As uh, generally, it exists. It exists within our own gender groups and outside our gender groups. And I'll explain that a little bit more as I go along. Given I've got 10 minutes, I need to get right into it, Fano. So here, let me try. First of all, I want to acknowledge Tarana Burke, who in 2006 actually coined the term Me Too. And it was in response to the impact and abuse of black women and women in general, the rape and, and abuse of girls and women. It's interesting to note, though, that her being a founder was pushed aside when the Me Too movement really got running many years later. She founded this 13 years ago, and she's still on the margins of it, uh, which indicates that this idea of, of diversity within this movement is lacking. So let me explain that a little bit further, but begin with a quote from Tirana. And her quote is, I watch carefully who are called the leaders of the movement, okay? Always look behind and find out where it was framed in the, in the beginning. For the visually impaired here, hopefully you'll get access to the PowerPoint. You're welcome to it. It's only a short one. But the picture I have up is of Tarana Burke and at a rally with a black T-shirt on, which says in pink, me too. It is outside and she is in front of a podium with a microphone on top and on the podium are the words California in progress. I wish I could sign language so that my deaf sisters could know what's being said. Hopefully in time we may even one day learn to do it and caption these things as we go. But the reason I say that is, guess who's being excluded from the Me Too movement? Yeah, us again. Sorry guys. So what about others and who are we? Well, women who identify as disabled and living in poverty, for a start, is one group. Uh, some facts for you. I had to draw from Canadian stats because our New Zealand stats are hopeless, especially in the area of abuse and violence against disabled. Um, and the Canadian stats were the most relevant to us, being Commonwealth, but also very similar in what we've seen anecdotally. We have one piece of research on violence or sexual abuse of um disabled and that's a tairawhiti one and that's it there is nothing else there's no funding no prioritizing no way of including us um we're just not part of anything even the refuge doesn't respond well to the needs of a disabled woman who's been abused so how are we ever going to get included if we're just invisible and kept out but the stats it crosses along gender sexuality age and, dis and ability for disabled experiences that's whanahawa Māori with disabilities, more likely to experience higher rates than disabled Pākehā. In fact, Māori disabled are seen as the most deprived group in the country. Māori without disabilities are next, and disabled mainstream are over halfway down. So if we want to talk about the most disparate groups, I'll talk about the ones I know, and that is Māori and disability. It highlights that research is long overdue in New Zealand, in relation to violence and abuse against disabled. And the stats on Indigenous disabled is far worse. Yet we do nothing to try and address it. And here are the stats, and they are similar to what I've seen with New Zealand in my work, both in law and also in research, in particular Indigenous research. Among adults who are developmentally disabled, as many as 83% of the females, 32% of males, are the victims of sexual assault. 49% of people with developmental disabilities who are victims of sexual assault um, will experience 10 or more abusive incidents. 38% of women with disabilities who have been married experience sexual violence by their partner. Only 3% of sex abuse cases involving people with developmental disabilities are ever reported. And I found this when I was practicing law. There are very, very, very few able to get it to the cops to take it to a prosecution. 
The police are not interested. They deem they lack capacity, and that is the problem. 38% of women with disabilities who have been married experience sexual violence by their partner. Yes, I saw that a lot. Only 3% um, overreported, sorry. 88 to 98 percent of sexual abusers are male and are known by the victim survivor who has disabilities. But, and this is the part I want you to think about, my ex, who was a woman, beat me in 96. It exists. Gender abuse against same gender does exist. The stats, though, are staggering around who the strangers are and who the family and friends are around abuse. 33 percent of abusers are acquaintances, 33% of abusers are family, 25% are caregivers or service providers. Think about that. It's not just family that abuse. It's prolific in the institutional environments around abuse of disabled. And we've seen it with reports in New Zealand, but what's being done? Nothing. Disabled need to be included in the corridor. While this time of Me Too feels hopeful for a social and cultural shift towards a safer world for women and girls, any interventions in the prevention of sexual violence needs to include economic advocacy and poverty reduction. And we, as individual caring Kiwis, our communities, our decision and policy makers, must not leave behind Māori. But as we've seen with the recent ward votes, hey, I just don't get why. People are so afraid of having Māori at the decision table. Pacifica disabled woman, uh, Pacifica woman shouldn't be excluded. Pacifica um, women are also marginalised. Disabled women and men, trans whanau, and particularly those with disabilities who live with their personal safety at extreme risk every day. We know that disabled people get abused at a much higher rate, men and women boys and girls, trans whanau, high rates of abuse, and we're not even addressing that in here. Why not? What, have we got a problem with people who want to identify differently to us that we don't think therefore they should be included and they are an at-risk group? Think about it. Picture description for those visually impaired. I have on that slide a black and white photo inside a building, a window at the back lets in light and the silhouette of a wheelchair sits empty. So what about diversity then? What does that mean? And can the Me Too movement embrace it? They probably think they do. But the absence of people of colour, disabled, trans whanau, kind of indicates something a bit different. When we use the word diversity, what do you think of? What are you thinking on that word? Is it more than ethnicity and race? It is also about diversity within diverse communities. So diversity within diversity. So in other words, I'm Māori, but I don't get to go to Marae. I don't get to go to many of the, the events. Why? If they don't have it for sign language, I have a hearing impairment. I wear um, hearing aids. If they don't have it for the blind, if they don't have it so we can physically access, then how do I get involved? If the Me Too movement is going to have rallies and they don't shoulder tap disabled leaders, how do we get involved? If they have it at an accessible venues, how do we get involved? If they have it in a way that kind of pretty much disses on kaupapa Māori or tikanga Māori or Māori tanga, how do we get involved? For Pacifica peoples, if it doesn't address it in their languages, how do we get involved? We don't. It's that simple. Unless you adapt and get more inclusive, you're going to have exclusions. It's that simple. It's not complex. It doesn't take an academic brain to work that one out. It just takes a brain. Anyway, uh, 20 years ago, well over 20 years ago, um, Kimberly Crenshaw coined the term intersectionality and with it an opportunity for greater inclusion of those who sit on the periphery looking in but often excluded. Now I've got a photo description for this slide and it's um, Nine hands of all shades of colours. So I have dark black to dark brown, light brown, pale white, 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 all colours. Holding up the word diversity, which is a range of colours themselves, rainbow colours. So it kind of shows you that they're looking at diversity from a broad sense. But back to the intersectionality. I've placed on there a reference to a TED talk. 
and I'd really love you to see it. It's Kimberly Crenshaw, and it talks about how to embrace those different groups and bring about more inclusion. You can't do it unless you get more intersectional. Two quotes from her, and then I'll summarise. Intersectionality is a lens through which you can see where power comes and collides, where it interlocks and intersects. It's not simply that there's a race problem, a gender problem, or a class or LGBTQI, or in brackets I've added, disabled problem there. Many times that framework erases what happens to people who are subject to all of these things. She also used the, uses the term intersectionality to describe this phenomenon. As she says, if you're standing in the path of multiple forms of exclusion, you're likely to get hit by both. In this moving talk, she calls on us to bear witness to this reality and speak up for the victims of prejudice. So I'm going to leave you with a whittle. I live with multiple forms of exclusion. I'm Māori. I'm excluded a lot from things Māori. I'm a woman. I'm excluded from a lot of things. I was never told I could ever be anything but a cleaner, a housewife, a mother. I am a mum. I'm a nana. I love it. But I could have realised years later, I could have gone on to be a doctor. I could have been, oh, I am, but a doctor of medicine, which was one of my interests. I could have been the opera singer that I was geared up for with um, almost had the chance to train under Dame Mary Leo. But exclusion is exclusion. So I want to leave you with that. How are you guys going to negotiate a better way of encompassing that diversity that's not part of this court at all? I'll leave you with that thought. Kakete.